Welcome, this is Logan on behalf of Renegade Slogan Media. Today I'm going to bring you a special edition, a special video of what I'm going to call, a new series I'm working on, of what I'm going to call Arguing with Liberals. Notice how I am using the blue font to represent the democratic color of blue. Yes, that's right. Okay, sorry, I'm going to cut it with the condensating attitude because I don't want to try to act superior to anybody because I'm really not. However, I do want to highlight, the, the reason I'm making this series is because I want to highlight some of the arguments that the left makes, very popular claims that they make, and how when you confront them on it, when they combat what you say, they either don't combat it or they try to change the the perspective of the conversation. They try to shift direction and get you off topic so you end up looking like a fool i mean you you can obliterate them on everything they say but then it just makes it a useless argument because you don't address the point that they brought out or that they decided to debate you on because of the fact that they are changing conversations this has happened multiple times with me at least when i argue with right wingers i don't consider myself a right winger by any means but at least when i argue with most right wingers there are some who try to shift the arguments they address every single argument i have honestly i'm going to tell you this right now i have honestly completely almost shifted my opinion on abortion because of arguments i've had with christian republicans christian conservatives because they actually responded to everything I say said, and they didn't bring up God or anything like that. They actually, they actually responded to my criticisms and my concerns. And before we get started, let's just make it known that I identify as an atheist or an anti-theist. So I'm blocking out names for obvious reasons. But what we have here is we have a photo that this individual, a female, shared. Explain the difference. And on the top left, we have a girl in front of an American flag holding a Bible, and it looks like to be some sort of hunting rifle, some sort of semi, semi-automatic semi weapon. Um, not, not a combat rifle or the falsely termed assault rifle. And she seems to be holding a Bible. This is obviously an attack aimed at Christian conservatives. The text says explain the difference, and then on the right you have an Islamic woman holding a, what seems to be a rifle. I don't know if it's a semi-automatic or an automatic rifle, because I don't know where this picture was taken. Um, I can't really tell, because the picture isn't very clear, but she is holding the Quran, and it seems to be in front of... That's not the Islamic flag or the ISIS flag. I can't tell what flag that is. But some sort of Middle Eastern country. She's made out to look like an like a Muslim, like an Islam. And it says explain the difference. And then the person is you know trying to explain the difference and then he's dumbfounded. Yes, this is a real argument that the left makes. And I give it up to those who... I can understand to those who have nothing to combat it or fall for this picture. But let me explain. I go on to respond to educate this individual. Their worshipped prophet Muhammad taught his followers to kill. Jesus taught his followers to forgive and to love. Yes, it is true that there is violence and murder in the Holy Bible, in the Christian Bible. However, the main difference is, is the prophet that they worship. Jesus did not tell people to kill anybody, and neither did... Well, wait a second, Judaism, they don't worship a prophet so they don't have a prophet telling them to kill people islam does muhammad told them to kill to convert and if they don't convert then behead them and then a good friend of mine said yes because we troll together even if it's factual information we troll and then this gal who i somewhat personally know decided to try to debate me on this and she attacks me saying have you ever read any of his teachings can you honestly say that you know that for a fact because you've read it in their sacred book and then these people who follow jesus do you think they're really following his teachings when they can't even accept someone of another race or different sexual orientation i'm not saying what either do or believe is right but what i'm saying is open your mind and find true facts before you start believing and saying all these very broad statements for one what christian have you ever met that did not accept accept somebody because of race. How many black churches do you see where there are no white people? The Christians here in my town are the most loving people I have ever met in my life. And I am an atheist, an anti-theist, whatever. I'm agnostic. I don't believe in religion 
whatsoever. Sorry, I got a little triggered there. Let me calm down. Let me take a moment. I, of course, didn't respond to the whole... I didn't dignify responding to the sexual orientation or the race. Um, but she brought up sexual orientation when Muslims throw gay people off of buildings. I mean, it's not that hard of a thing to look up. You go on Hillary Clinton supporting Google, and it's the first three articles you see if you type in Muslims throwing gay people off buildings or Islam anti-gay. And you will see, liveleak.com, Muslims throw gay people off a roof, Allah Akbar shouted. Watch ISIS throws two gay men off roof and stones them. Gruesome photos allegedly showing Islamic State throwing gay men off the roof. So her entire attack on Christianity is completely inaccurate because that is what Islam teaches. And she tells me to open up my mind. Meanwhile, she criticizes me because I didn't read the holy book or whatever. I guess she's right. I shouldn't argue. I have been completely dumbfounded. But ha, I got her. Because, little does she know, I have read the Quran and I have read the Holy Bible. Hence why I'm an atheist or anti-theist, I should say. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an agnostic anti-theist. I've read the Quran and the New Testament. Would you like me to quote Jesus and Muhammad for you? That is my gun. I asked her if she wants me to quote Jesus and Muhammad for her. Because I will literally do it. I will literally, legitimately as well, quote Muhammad. So she can see. Fight those from among the people of the book who believe not in Allah, nor in the last day, nor hold as unlawful what Allah and his messenger have declared to be unlawful, nor follow the true religion until they pay the tax with their own hand and acknowledge their subjection. So here we're talking about behanding. We're talking about chopping off the hands of non-believers. Now, does the Holy Bible say this? I'm sure, but they're not telling the reader to do that. They're telling what people who believed in God did. This is from Allah. Allah. And Muhammad. Muhammad, their prophet. Understand? Now I get that I'm being a little condescending. But you have to when somebody tries to call you out on some shit. When you're obviously right. You have textual evidence. And this isn't the only one. But if you do it not, and never shall you do it, then guard against the fire, whose fuel is men and stones, which is prepared for the disbelievers. Those who disbelieve will bear the consequences of their disbelief. I have been commanded to fight against people till they testify that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Doesn't that just sound peaceful? Muhammad, the one who had the... Nine-year-old, or sorry, six-year-old wife. Some people say nine, some people say twelve. Regardless, any age between six and twelve is a little pedophilic. I don't care what culture you are, that is pedophilic. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Look at that hatred just spewing out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. Here's the thing. She tried to bring up how Christians don't accept people of a different race or different sexuality. Here's one thing. Islam didn't either. Here's another thing. You will find nowhere in any church where white people, and this is excluding the Westboro Baptist Church, which, by the way, are registered Democrats. Anyway, you'll find nowhere in the Bible where it says it's okay to kill people based on race or sexuality. Sure, in Salman Mora, you might find that uh, people were killed because of homosexual sin, but Jesus doesn't teach that, which is the prophet that Christians believe in. Hence, the word Christian has Christ in it. They were taught to hate the sin but love the sinner. You don't hate the sinner. So it's not that they don't accept a person of a different sexuality. They don't accept the other sexuality, which is fine. Because guess what? We live in a free society where you don't have to accept anyone's beliefs or lifestyle. And for some reason, it's hateful to not accept, not accept somebody's lifestyle, and that is horrendous. Just like how the left doesn't accept the right. Sure, this might be anecdotal evidence, but you see it anywhere on the internet. And yes, the right do it too. But the left are the ones in control right now. So there's that for you. So I offered to quote her Jesus and Muhammad, and she says, no, I'm okay, thanks, though. 
do have to say I've met enough Muslims to know that a true one wouldn't do something like we see on the news because that's not what they're taught. But if it's still what you want to believe. So she dismisses what I say even though I offered to show her what they were taught. But she said no. Why? I just quoted you something Muhammad said. That is what they're taught to believe. I don't care how many Muslims you know. And by the way, she hasn't met that many Muslims that live in the same town she has. The only Muslims we've had were people that came from Palestine as foreign exchange students. Who, by the way, I feel sympathetic for because, well, Israel versus Palestine. She's caught in the middle of that conflict with uh, aggressors on both sides. But... She completely tried to dismiss what I said, even though I offered to disprove her, and then she still tried to dismiss me as I didn't disprove her. As if I didn't disprove her, which makes no logical sense. I offered you proof. You said no, and then acted as if I didn't give you proof. Except in this video, we'll see I quoted Muhammad for ya. So yes, that's what they're taught. I read the Quran. I also stated I read the Quran. And then she still says, but if that's still what you want to believe. What do you mean if that's still what I want to believe? I just said I read the Quran and offered you proof. That is the left's tactic of arguing. Don't think she got away with it, though, because I responded. What do you mean... Quote, if that's what you still want to believe, unquote, you have no context to debate me. You haven't disproved me about Muhammad. I offered to quote his teachings. You said no. You clearly have no argument. Instead, you try to twist it into me saying Muslims are terrorists, which I never said. All you have is anecdotal evidence. There is a reason why they're called radical Islamists and why people don't just say Muslims will kill you. You can you can try the condensing. I ended up editing it later. But what I said was, you can try the condescending attitude when you can actually refute me or my argument. And then, me being a smartass, bom dia, ciao, for my Portuguese ancestry and the language my grandma spoke. So there's that for ya. And this was last month, before July. This, <laughs> this was in June. And she didn't respond to me. I clearly won. She had no argument, and yet she tried to call me out as if I had no argument. Which I did, and I offered her to quote. I offered her me quoting Jesus Christ and Muhammad. Which I quoted mostly Muhammad and one quote from Jesus. I could quote other Jesus quotes, but this video is getting pretty long. I will make a part two if anybody tries to doubt me or accuse me of twisting this video to a right-wing narrative. Guys, Muslims and Islam, they are taught to kill people and not to be accepting Christians are taught to hate the sin but love the sinner. Does this mean they all practice it? No. But a radical Christian accepts you. They don't accept your lifestyle. Which is a free society in my opinion. A radical Muslim doesn't accept your lifestyle. And they don't accept you. Radical is basically a thorough practice. A very precise practice of something. Or precise belief. Radical Christians think they can heal you and pray for you. Radical Muslims want to kill you. Radical Jews think they're the chosen one. This is Logan of Renegade's Slogan Media. Setting out. Go ahead and debate me in the comment section below. Or debate each other. Have a good one.